Hey, it's Dave Brown here, host of Now with Dave Brown on AMI. Check out this latest highlight from the show. Marco Pasqua got a little adventuresome on his trip to Switzerland. He went paragliding. And we have a video that Mark, uh, Marco took while paragliding. The video shows him strapped to a guide with the sky and mountains behind him. They twist and turn, revealing the ground way, way below them. Let's take a look. To ask you not to scream because okay. people can hear it very easily. Uh, okay, well, I won't scream. Okay, you go right. I'm not gonna lie, I felt I, like I could have been getting a little bit dizzy there by the third full spin. But here to tell you all the details is Marco Pasqua. He is the co-founder of Meaningful Access Consulting. Good morning, Marco. How are you doing today? Good morning, Alex. I don't have as much windswept hair today, but I'm doing great. <laughs> well, you know, how was the experience? Let's just dive right into it. Like, why, first off, why paragliding of all the activities to try? Well, I mean, why not? First and foremost, I've always wanted that sensation of feeling like I was flying. I heard that more than skydiving, paragliding gives you that sense of floating above the earth. And when I was going back to Switzerland with my wife, my wife's originally from Switzerland, just for context, and she hasn't seen her family in 20 years. The last time we, uh, the, the whole family, I should say, the last time we saw her aunts and uncles was at our wedding 10 years ago. They all came out from Switzerland. Um, this is my first time in Switzerland. And I said to myself, if we're going out to Switzerland, then we have to do something epic. And why not paragliding? Uh, you know, it's obviously known for its luscious mountains, beautiful views. My only caveat to my, my wife was, if I'm going to do this, then I want you to do it with me as well. And so, <laughs> although I have an extreme fear of heights, I don't know if you know that, Alex, I always put myself in extremely uncomfortable situations. And so I figured what more uncomfortableness than putting myself strapped to somebody like a baby carrier on their chest and just jump off the side of a hill. Why not? <laughs> I mean, in the video, as you said, you didn't scream, so I, it, I, I could sense there was a bit of, you know, hesitation uh, as you're doing all those spins, but how was the experience generally? It was the most incredible experience of my life, I think. It, um, you know, in that video, you see me close my eyes a lot, and it's because there was an extreme amount of G-forces. My a pilot, as they called him, Reto. Um, he's apparently a bit of a stunt guy. And he said to me, I can do some crazy tr uh, tricks. Do you want me to do some 360 flips in our paraglide here? And I said, you know what? I'm here with you already. We might as well go for it. Um, and so we did it. And of course, my biggest fear was I was going to lose my Jordans falling right off my feet. Uh, <laughs> I thought my, my shoes were just going to fly right off. But this guy was an absolute professional, uh, made me feel like a million bucks while I was up there. You know, for those who are audio only, I had a big, big smile on my face, albeit, uh, you know, G-forced. Uh, enhanced, we'll say, uh, and uh, you know it was it was such an incredible experience. And what better person to do it with than alongside my wife as well, who was with a different pilot at the same time. And, and so, what did the team do to make the experience not only comfortable for you, but more accessible and in, in cater to your needs? Yeah, that's a really good question. Uh, so I had seen videos of uh, Curb Free with Corey Lee, for those who know who he is out there in the accessibility world, um, doing something very similar in Interlochen. Interlochen is the place we went to. Um, it was a three-hour drive from where I was staying mm -hmm. in Switzerland. And my in-laws thought we were insane to drive three hours to go paragliding because end-to-end -to, -end to Switzerland driving is about six hours. But as a Canadian, a three-hour drive is a standard day, it seems, for most of us. Uh, you know, so I was 
like, no, this is no problem at all. When I got there, I was expecting to have a frame that I would be sitting in, almost like a uh, a framed out uh, uh, like wheelchair or something like this. I've seen uh, mm -hmm. uh, Corey Lee, as I mentioned, uh, do this and be really strapped into this device. When we got there and I said, so how does the framing work? They say, what framing? I said, well, for <laughs> me to sit into a frame. They said, well, no, we're not going to do that. And it was a bunch of uh, really nice guys from New Zealand. And they said, listen, man, what we're going to do is we're actually going to strap you in, have you feel very comfortable, and then get this two guys on either side of you, one guy on either side is going to grab onto your arms and we're just going to run. And we are going to run, 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 run until we get to the end and we're just going to hoop, push you and then boom, you're off the edge with your pilot and that's it. So basically we are going to be your legs so that you don't have to be, but not to worry, uh, we've got you and we have thousands of flights under our belt. And so I trusted them. They, they strapped me in and we were ready to go. And, and that's such a, a hilarious way to describe. I, I don't know about you, Marco. I think I would almost be more afraid of the takeoff than actually being mm. in the air. As you say, they're just running and pushing you. You just hope that you're, uh, the, the chute's going to catch some wind and you're going to take flight. But uh, here's the question to kind of determine whether or not how much you enjoyed it. Would you do it again? A thousand percent. I would do it again. It wasn't that expensive. I think for my wife and I both uh, to do this once in a life a, a time opportunity was about six hundred dollars Canadian after conversion, and that included the uh, the video and the pictures um, from our flights. So more than worth it. I think I would go back and do it again. Uh, our cousins in Switzerland said to me next time uh, skydiving uh, to go with them as that's <laughs> something that they're very much used to. And I said, absolutely. So um, I would highly recommend it to anybody, regardless of your disability, please know that sky wings paragliding um, in Switzerland, they are consummate professionals. They know exactly what they're doing. They made me feel safe. My wife feels safe. And all I was left with was a bunch of incredible memories. That's awesome to hear, Marco. Before I let you go, though, I want to get your opinion and thoughts on the Daily Poll. I'm asking everyone about it because applying for a job as a person with a disability can be extremely challenging. Do you disclose your disability when uh, you are submitting an application, yes or no? I know it may have been a, a while since you've last done a formal application for a job, <laughs> but when you uh, do you sure. disclose your disability during that process? Yeah, I'm going to borrow from Michelle McQuig from the last segment and say it depends on the experience I have in the past. And I do recommend it to individuals if you feel as though your disability will prove to be an asset in the application. Many times when I'm applying for opportunities to sit on boards that are related for persons with disabilities, I will highlight obviously that I am a person with a disability. However, you know, self-disclosure is a very personal decision, and you have to do your research with the organization in which you're applying for to determine whether or not they're a right fit for you. And that may or may not mean right out the gate disclosing your disability or not. Now, that's not to say that they are, are a bigoted employer or they're not an inclusive mm -hmm. employer. It just may mean that um, in the initial stages, it may not be the appropriate time to do so. But obviously, I'm going to advocate that people do disclose if they feel comfortable to do so. But do your homework, do your research on the organization that you're applying for, make sure that it makes sense. And if you feel as though you can highlight the strengths of tenacity that having a disability has supported you um, in, in the venture that you're applying for, then 100% um, you know, disclose that as, as I have in the past. Yeah, I'm really enjoying this trend that's developing and all the, the people who have chimed in on the poll so far that use your disability as a selling feature, as a lived experience. Set yourself apart in the application from everyone else could really benefit you. Marco, thank you so much. Have yourself a wonderful day. Thanks, Alex. Appreciate it. That is Marco Pasqua, the co-founder of Meaningful Access Consulting. Do you want to dive into more conversations like this? Watch Now with Dave Brown weekdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on AMI-tv or download the podcasts wherever you listen.